Olympic weightlifting has been used for a very long time in strength and conditioning for many sports, particularly cycling of all disciplines. In this video, we're gonna take a look at why you might use Olympic lifts, things to look out for for safety and efficacy, alternatives, and ultimately, we're gonna dissect why you might turn to Olympic lifts or not to help with your mountain biking. First of all, what are the Olympic lifts? It's very simple. The snatch and the clean and jerk. The snatch is taking a barbell from the ground, locking it out in an overhead position in one movement. The clean and jerk, similar, but there's a pause on the shoulder before then pressing or jerking overhead to a locked out position. These two lifts make up the sport of weightlifting which is why they call it Olympic lifts, because those two combined are an Olympic sport. You might also hear them called the quick lifts because they are very fast. And part of that is why they're great for a lot of training. So let's take a look at why you might use these Olympic lifts in your training. So you might think the snatch and clean, they really reflect on your ability to say bunny hop. However, it's not necessarily the movement crossover, it's more the physiological change and benefits of performing a movement at high speed and medium to heavy weight. So it's the speed and power or intention of moving fast that helps your brain connect to the muscle, therefore recruiting more muscle fibers, which then relate to things like sprint ability and ultimately having functional muscles underneath you as you ride. The snatch and clean and jerk are primarily chosen in strength and conditioning because of the triple extension, the ankles, knees, and hips being totally open from a closed position in a short amount of time, increasing the velocity into the bar. And taking a look at the snatch and the clean and jerk separately, you can see where the similarities are in that position. On the clean, because the finishing position is the shoulder, the bar doesn't have to go as high. So taking a look at the snatch, if you can see the bar has to travel faster because it has to go higher, which means that the weight can be less. Ultimately, both lifts have a triple extension, so a massive explosive movement hitting speed and power. So having looked at both lifts, you can see there that they both encourage speed and power. The load can be different and the distance different, but if I read from Google the definition of power in sport, power is the ability to overcome resistance in the shortest period of time, leading to the ability to produce higher velocities against a given load. So there on the snatch, the load is less, but the distance is more and the time is similar. On the clean, the load is more, the distance is less, but the benefits are very similar because of the definition of power. So ultimately, you see the Olympic lifts in strength and conditioning from endurance sports all the way down to strength and power sports because it increases your ability to recruit muscle. However, with the Olympic lift comes lots of demand on mobility and technique. So let's take a look at those things that you need to be aware of before introducing Olympic lifts into your program. So a lot of our athletes, our professional riders, really lack the mobility, particularly in the shoulders, to be able to land in a safe position on the snatch. And also in the clean. If you suffer from mobility issues from injury or general tightness, then you must, must, must look at mobility first before you start the Olympic lifts. Let's take a look at a couple of prerequisites before you start snatching and clean and jerking. So before you do any of these lifts, see if you can do these first. With a PVC pipe, straight arms all the way over your back. Now the bar has to be in the position that you're gonna lift from, and you're gonna be able to bring it around your head right down the back. 
Now the obvious safety element to this is that if you land a snatch incorrectly and it drops out the back, it's not gonna dislocate your shoulder. But actually over time, what we want is that the load is into the shoulder socket and not on the muscles when you land out front. If you've got good hip and ankle mobility, then you can land deep. If you don't, then you might be reserved to the power snatch. So if your shoulders are good and your hips are bad, then you might have to land the snatch taller to stay safe in your lower back. If you really struggle with the overhead position of the snatch, then the clean is a good option, but the clean ultimately lands with the bar on your shoulder. The elbow's tall, this is your landing position. Try then to do a front squat and see about your hip mobility. If you can't get low, then you can't be expected to catch the weight low. So don't try, but try these. See how the weight feels in your shoulder and wrist before you start cleaning with lots of weight. We've got two alternatives here, both of which eliminate the catch position. So you don't have to be to the detriment of your mobility in upper body. The first one is a banded back squat. With the bands, it encourages speed and power. It gives you something to fight against, and at the top, you're not gonna jump. So it's as you would normally back squat with safety priority on the lower back curve. But as you get to the bottom, pause, and then stand up as hard as you can. And as you can see, ankle, knee, hip, all extended in a nice, fast motion. And then alternatively, we can use a trap bar and do trap bar jumps. Bah! Depending on the weight, then determines how high you jump and the stimulus that we're looking for, depending on maybe training cycles, etc. But again, we get the triple extension of the hip, the speed and power without having to catch on the shoulder or overhead. Both of these have limitations, but also they are very good and better in other ways than the quick lifts or the Olympic lifts. So consider these, particularly if you don't want to spend the time to learn the Olympic lifts. These are good movements that you can integrate into your training reasonably quickly and safely. There's lots of different ways to perform the lifts, but ultimately what you wanna do is include them if you're able if you have the desire to and you're not sure if you're able, find a very good Olympic lifting coach. It's essential that you don't just go to any personal trainer or CrossFit coach. They might not be up to scratch. Find a good qualified Olympic lifting coach first. They will be able to teach you more in less time, so ultimately you'll be able to perform the lifts better in the end. I hope you enjoyed this video and they educated you a little bit about training for mountain biking. That's exactly what we do at Fit for Racing. So if you liked it, please subscribe, even comment, because that does actually help us. Subscribing means that you get to see all of our future content, of which there will be tons. So I will see you in a future video. Peace.